Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to part two of our Marvel preview. This episode is focused on 2018 and 2019, all the Marvel films and TV series coming up. Very exciting stuff with me today to talk this stuff out are the boys, the TPSB crew. (laughs) Yeah, Connor hello, and Benny. TPSB. Boys, part two, we're ready to talk some more Marvel. Speaking of comeback, TPSB. (laughs) (laughs) You gave it a good week of plug. I'm bringing it back. Get ready. No, you got to plug it a bit, let it die down a bit, build up a fan base. Very X-Men-ish. Yes, that's it. Look at this marketing genius. Yeah, no, I I jumped the gun there a bit. I'm sorry on that one. These things work (laughs) in 10-year cycles, okay? So... (laughs) All right, let's jump into it. So this is part two. If you haven't listened to part one of this episode that covers the rest of 2017, please head to um, iTunes and YouTube to check it out. All right, first up for 2018, what do we got, Benny? Okay, right at the beginning there, Feb 16, we have Black Panther, um, finally, uh, directed by Ryan Coogler, who we last saw doing Creed. He also did Fruitvale Station. Mm. This guy is a fucking gun. Yes. Um, I, I love both his movies. Creed especially, I thought, was one of the best franchise f- installment films I've ever seen. It was spectacular. Yeah. Particularly from, from a Rocky franchise mm. perspective. I think just how it just completely reinvented the wheel for that franchise was its biggest strength, but also just as a film. Yeah. I, yeah. You didn't have to just, know, yeah. you didn't yeah. have to watch any of the Rocky films. Yeah, yeah, that's what I think is so amazing about it. It works as a like a reboot, as a remake almost, and as a sequel, it's, it's yeah. stunning. I, I can count on one hand probably the number of times I've been literally on the edge of my seat and that fight at the end, um, I was. So I'm so excited to see this man make uh, a superhero film in the Marvel Universe. Especially with a property like that, Black Panther, I mean, in, in the limited amount of movies that we've seen him in, has been One. so cool. Yeah, I think we've only seen <laughs> yeah. him in Civil War. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, he, was, yeah. He, well, was, he was wicked in that. Yeah, that Chadwick movie Boseman, had man. so much on its plate, um, and it was just juggling so many balls in the air, but everyone was so well served, and he was no exception. Um, he was so cool in that, in that film. The, the look, the performance, just him outside of the suit even, he managed to be very charming in the role. Um, he, for me, he really was one of the standouts of that film. Mm. Just and, and as you said, not only because he looked fucking awesome in that suit, that the design and the way that it moved and it, it was so cool. Mm. But just outside of it, like just on pure acting chops, mm. um, was really spectacular. Well, he's yeah. known to be method, so he gets into his roles and he so he lives actually in like it. lived in leather for a good little while. And he wears the helmet <laughs> and everything. He tries to eat his cereal. It's he's a little like, precarious. He's like forty two years old or something. Yeah, he looks good for forty two. Crazy man. <laughs> Holy I th- shit! I thought he was in his twenties. Yeah, he's been kicking around for a while. Yeah, I thought who's this young newcomer they've got yeah. in this film um <laughs> yeah he, he could be a king <laughs> but he, um, he i think he's one of those actors that has really spent you know the best part of two three decades building up his acting chops mm. becoming an incredible actor and then taking this kind of opportunity and running with it mm. now, speaking of acting let me just rattle off the cast here because this is one of the best we've yet seen i think in the universe which is saying a lot but uh, we've got chadwick boseman of course heading up the lead forrest whitaker um michael b jordan uh, the, the Human Torch from Fantastic Four um, and from Creed, obviously. He's fantastic. Martin Freeman back from Civil War. Oh, cool. Uh, Lupita Nyong'o, who has just been on such a roll for the past few years, making an amazing name for herself. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out is in this one. Oh, nice. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. And Andy Serkis um, back from Age of Ultron, Ultron as yes. Ulysses Claw. Without an arm. Without an arm. Yeah. So hopefully he'll have his little satellite dish that yeah. shoots laser <laughs> beams from the comics now. So who's Forrest Whitaker playing? Um... I, don't, I assume a Forrest Whitaker character. Yeah, so Saul Guerrero too. Save the rebellion. Oh, that's, that's Save who the MCU. <laughs> Save the Avengers. <laughs> yeah. Save the dream. Oh God, how good would that be? Like this whole Disney shared universe pop, yeah. <laughs> yeah. pops his head out. We'll get to figure out how he loses his limbs and becomes half machine. Yeah. Oh, that's so scary. <laughs> um, so just a stunning cast there, and I also want to say we don't talk much about music on this podcast but the composer is Ludwig Göransson who is uh, a frequent Donald Glover um, cool. uh, collaborator, collaborator. Yeah. he's he's worked on like his last few albums with him which is very cool that's a good that's a really nice um to hear from Marvel because I feel like one of the weakest areas of Marvel is probably the scores they they they're not bad mm. they just don't have like that x factor where I'm go 
I need to go purchase yeah. that soundtrack mm. and They're listen consistent. to it on repeat. Yeah, and I like the main Avengers theme. Yeah. Mm. I love it. Um, but it's, uh, I don't know, I, I'm excited by this. Maybe you'll have a bit more of a hip hop feel. It'll be a bit more eclectic than than some of the other scores have been in the past. I, I, I'm really excited for this film. I think this is really primed to be a special entry into mm. the MCU. And it just, it feels good to have uh, a kind of a standalone film with that kind of character. I mean, um, I mean, the, for for all Marvel has done, one of the main concerns that a lot of people have had is is the diversity claim, um, and it's it's good to see them whether whether they're doing this because of that or not. Um, it's good to see that it's in action. Mm. Yeah, I think um, Disney have done a good job of you know trying to you know find baby, baby other little steps. pockets. Ba- yeah, baby, yeah. Steps. baby steps. But I mean, steps. the last couple of years they've they've been doing really well. You know, I mean, with their entry into Star Wars. Yeah, Moana. Um, you know yeah. that uh, focus on Polynesian. Yeah, yeah. Culture. Um, I mean, having you know. At any rate, I think it's it's a cool direction to go. Yep. I'm um, very excited to see that film. Not long, February 16th. Yeah, we still yeah. don't know much about it, but um, I could not be more stoked for this film. I know it's... it's Less than a year every, off. Every Marvel movie I talk about, I'm like, this is the one I'm most excited <laughs> for. But, but I actually, like, I was so in love with Creed that I think this actually may be my most anticipated uh, more to than a certain Thor. extent. Um, yeah, maybe uh, if only because we haven't seen anything from this. So I literally have nothing... It could be as good as or bad as you want it to be at this point. Yeah, yeah. This is just like a a dream at this point. (laughs) So when do you guys think we'll see a trailer? Maybe September? Oh, it'll be later than that. Yeah, I'd say. Because, you know, they'll have, what, a six, eight month lead time on it Mm. with, um, you know, a a teaser. There'll definitely be one at the very latest uh, on Thor. uh, Comic-Con's coming up. Uh, They'll probably plug it there. That could be cool, yeah. Could be, yeah. Yeah, maybe just something. There's a lot. Some there's early a lot footage. of Marvel property for them to go on between, yeah. like, on Comic Con. Yeah, but you know, time's now. coming. You know, this is uh, what eight, nine months away. They're yeah. gonna have to start hype, getting that machine pumping. Definitely mm-hmm. starting. Yeah. But yeah, very excited for that. I think we can all agree. That yeah. That hopefully, be really good. And next up, uh, another new television show. Um, this one coming from the channel Freeform, which uh, is more of a young adult audience, uh, young women in particular as well, I believe. So this is M- Marvel's first foray with a company other than ABC or um, I think, Netflix. I think, it's, I think it's under the ABC umbrella um, of channels. Oh, okay. it's, a, it's a cable channel. Just a yeah, it's just a more specific okay. um, demographic. Okay. I mean, again, it's just another example of them branching out. Little and niches. Hitting different markets. Yep. The, the, the trailer has already been released, which is... Really early, um, but that's cool. But yeah, you, so you guys just saw it for the first time. Um, I one I told you beforehand to keep your minds open because a few people watch this and it is a very different vibe than we've seen in the, the MCU up to this point. It's like, except for a little bit of superhero stuff at the end, is very much like a, a romance um, looking show, which it, I think is awesome. I, I really like yeah, that trailer. I'm pumped for it. Yeah. I love the look of that trailer. Yeah, I don't need every Marvel property to look like the main MCU story line i yeah i mean i I'm, i like how they're giving it a different feel giving it a different flavor yeah i think the powers as well and in of themselves are very different to what yeah, we've so, seen so there's a pretty obscure couple of characters from the mcu um a lot of people have probably seen them because they're very visually striking really awesome designs um but so cloak and dagger awesome name um cloak's power is he essentially can open up um a portal to uh, some dark universe and send people through and it's a kind of a blessing curse thing. He's got a constant hunger for for light, which can only be fed by uh, consuming victims, <laughs> sending them through there, or by uh, daggers power, which is she can create little daggers of light, which can can feed him, and um, uh, she can use them as weapons as well and stuff like that. Um, it, this is a series that often touches on substance abuse and drug addiction. Um, in that he has this hunger that he has to feed and only she can okay, help him. Okay, cool. It's, so this series could go in some really interesting directions um, for that kind of young adult sort of... I think the trailer teases that. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, there's, it looks intense. <laughs> I mean, the powers are only really um, shown at the end. And I really like the look of the dagger. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think this is prime for for something special. I, yeah. I, I'm really excited for it. I always get very nervous um, with that young adult kind of label for a film and all because all i think about is arrow which is in and of itself <laughs> that's, it's, not, it's, that's not really a young adult thing that's a soap opera yeah well that i mean the i think of twilight or 
Yeah, Hunger Games. Like the, is, yeah. I think kind of the big... Um, but I, I, I do get kind of that, because that's generally when you take a um, superhero and you put it into that kind of context, that's immediately where my mind goes. Cutesy. Yeah, it's it's cutesy. When, when Arrow's working at its best, it's a lot of fun, though, for, for, the, for oh, the market yeah. it aims yeah. at. Um, this looks very this looks very different than that to me. This looks, oh. this looks um, very straight-faced, very, very kind which of is, Which is what I was going to lead up to, saying that this doesn't look like that. It does mm. look like it's going to be a little... It, it might fit that young adult audience, but it's certainly not going to be cutesy. So the, yeah. the showrunner is Joe Pokaski, who um, did Heroes. Oh, cool. Which I never okay. got into. Um, no, there's a lot of hype of that in the mid-2000s. Yeah, absolutely. Had a big yeah. Yeah. It was that and Lost. And yeah. 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 So I think that's a pretty decent pedigree. Uh, he could do something interesting. Um, he's also a Marvel comic book writer, which cool. is cool to see someone from the comics coming up. Did, did, did he write... Um, Cloak and Dagger? I have no idea. <laughs> it makes so. sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, no, no, it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> and, and, crazy. Just, just I want to note, because I'm uh, a nerd, that the, at the very end of this trailer, you see a little sign for the Roxxon Corporation, which has been in the background of a lot of Marvel properties, um, which you probably haven't even noticed from the looks on your faces. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're, they're essentially just like a big evil corporation, like kind of oil tycoon stuff. But um, they played a big role in Agent Carter, um, Oh God, that one! Is that still <laughs> yeah. going? No, no, no. no okay. that, that did two seasons uh, yep. and done. But um, it also from Agent Carter was a big focus on the Dark Force, which is the dimension that Cloak uh, sends people to, and oh, it's also okay. connected to Doctor Strange as well. So I, I like all of these kind of just little details that yeah. feed into each wow. other. I'm really into that stuff. I, I find this just the MCU in general. The more you consume, the more. Uh, the more nourishment you get out of it. Yeah. Um, you're more actually linkages. convincing me that I do need to see Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, yeah. me too. And and kind of, because it... <laughs> I, I mean, don't want that responsibility. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't want to stake my I reputation go, on that. Ne- next time we have a top eight, it's be like, Connor, what have you done this week? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking watch season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Ben. Four <laughs> seasons. <laughs> oh, it's so Just good. Just it away so to a husk. <laughs> yeah. But I think we are all pretty on board with this one. Uh, this only got, this trailer only got released, what, six... Uh, three weeks ago two weeks ago something like that yeah so the lead time it's pretty short i mean it's coming out in a year so Mm. um, marvel seems to have a lot of things up their sleeve that we're not necessarily aware of at least i wasn't aware of this there's no marketing Uh, this one was on my radar at all Mm, i think this would be very low key I, i could see this being a one season and done sort of thing uh, the MCU has the advantage of being able to do that because they're not relying on one kind of stream to continue. Well, given that it's all connected, these characters could turn up, you know, theoretically anywhere. anywhere so anywhere, yeah, yeah. I think it's so cool that they can just look at like let's do a ten episode thing on this little property. Let's not try and make it into this big thing um, and just do it right. Yeah, I don't think anyone's holding up realistically too much hope of all of these various characters from all these different properties all being in the same place at any one no. point you know <laughs> in, in the possible. infinity war but <laughs> man it'd be cool man I, I, what, uh, the agents of shield should have been in age of ultron when the helicarrier comes up at the end they yep. just should have had a couple of the actors in the fucking helicarrier it would have been i would have stood up out of my chair and cheered <laughs> I, I wish they'd get the synergy right on that stuff kevin feige just came out recently saying a crossover will happen yep. eventually yeah. between the TV How and the movie stuff. How have we gotten stuff. this far into the the conversation and that's the first time we've mentioned him? Oh, he doesn't really do much, I don't think. I don't think he's really involved. <laughs> 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 the, the head honcho, Kevin Feige, he's a genius. Um, I was asking you before. I wonder, genius producer. I, was, I wonder how involved he is in the kind of minutia of how each of these projects pan out. Hmm. So I'd be, I'd be very interested to see whether he says, hit these three plot points. Or, you know, this is the story that you need to do. I really don't think they're that heavy-handed anymore. I think they were at the beginning when they were really trying to wrangle everything into a cohesive direction. But Mm -hmm. I think they've just kind of got it down pat now, this kind of collaborative thing that they're doing with all the directors. I don't know how... It's it's amazing it's all working so well. Like, I feel like there should just be some major contradictions just in the, the, the text. But there is a connective tissue between these, like, Cloak and Dagger relates to Doctor Strange. Um, So Kevin Feige... You know, he there is somebody there. I think he's super top line. I think he's really thinking about the overall, you know, he's thinking about yeah. 20 movies at a time. Mm. And, that's and other I'm, people yeah. come in and they're thinking about this little sliver here. Yeah. But then there's, there must be a tear. His office is just photos yeah. all over the wall with yeah. a red string. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but he must, like, <laughs> there, there must be uh, f- multiple layers in there who have 
um, control on how do how what what properties are we commissioning? Which is why I asked. I wonder if he just kind of goes to a director and said, "Hit these two plot points. Like this is what we need in your movie, and then just run creatively however you want to yeah. work around that." Mm. And then I'm, I'm I'm assuming that along the way they'll just say, "Well, no, you can't do that because that mm. can, contradicts with this or that." I imagine it just depends heavily on the on the property. Uh, yeah. James Gunn obviously had a lot of freedom on Guardians too. Mm. But the, I mean, else. it's not that interconnected. It's, it feels like yeah, its own little exactly. thing. Exactly, yeah. It's like you, you're just off here, you do your own thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, all right. <laughs> all right enough let's, gushing let's, on Feige. How did Cloak and Dagger like spur yeah, that was like the, the longest biggest segment. conversations? <laughs> yeah, <about it. laughs> um, yeah we'll, we'll spend about two minutes on this next one. Uh, May 14, 2018. Sorry, May 4th, uh, Infinity War. Infinity War. The, the Infinity War that we've been working towards. Um, we finally get to find out about the the gems, the stones, and all that. Yep. I mean, it, it seems a bit seems a bit surreal that it's all working up to that actually happening. Oh, no. I'm gonna be freaking out in the cinema like I am seeing Infinity War Part One. Yeah. Is this even is this... more so with Part Two because that'll that'll be the well, bookend no, yeah. for so, this. So this film was retitled from Infinity War That's Part right. One uh, just to Infinity War to dissuade the notion that it and its sequel are one big film. Yep. Yeah. Um. So. The more we hear about this, they sounds like they're not as connected as, as originally thought, even though they are being shot back to back. But we but originally they were shot as one kind of whole project yeah. and they now were they as one at least. But we yeah. heard a few weeks ago that they're, they're separating the production schedules out a little bit more mm. and they're treating them, as you said, as yeah. separate entities rather than part one, part two. Yeah. Yeah. What what a what an absolutely insane undertaking though. Um the cast for this film is essentially just everyone who's been in the MCU, uh, in the movies at least. It's going to be insane. Uh, yeah, but what this mostly looks like at this point is uh, an Avengers-Guardians crossover. That's what this is really looking to feel like um, versus, of course, Thanos, who has been very lightly set up in, in a few films beforehand. Yeah. But most heavily in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the only time that he's actually had real screen time mm. in an actual film. Yeah, and it was not amazing. So hopefully they can... Uh, they can really make him something special. Because He's the linchpin of this. There's yeah. a lot riding on can they make Thanos work? Yeah. yeah. Because this is a fucking ensemble, man. Yeah. We they yeah. really have to have, He's gonna have an to be ominous special. threat. Not even ominous, just like He's got to pack pack a punch. How is he gonna be fighting with them? You know, I'm interested yeah. to see, you know, like twenty people coming at him he's yeah. what eight feet nine feet tall ten feet tall so he's not yeah. that much bigger was he going to be swatting them away i'm just interested in the actual physics of how he's going to look if, on screen if all goes to his plan he's going to have like control over reality and time oh <laughs> so, okay yeah. so it's so in the comics i mean i don't know how f far into spoilers we want to go to I, I do know that that um general arc has a lot to do with dr strange um and his abilities and I feel like it will be very much that kind of spacey, weird, um, uh, you know, vibe that we got in Doctor Strange. Is that true, Benny? Can you confirm uh, that? No, that's that's way off base. Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> I actually know what I'm talking about. This I'm time. not going to accept that statement until Benny clears it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm kidding, I don't, I'm kidding. The, the comics. No, you're not. <laughs> when, when talking hey, about you're the not wrong to do it as well, by the way. So I will talk endless amounts yeah. of shit on this podcast without like checking. Oh, we're we're aware. Once. We're aware. <laughs> yeah. um, when when talking about the MCU, you can kind of throw the comics out the window because they take they take names and you know characters, obviously. But uh, uh, whenever That's they about do, it. yeah, the stories are completely different. Yep. Um, just the I think they're very calculated about where they kind of touch on the um, on the comic books. I mean, the one of the more famous ones is the. Uh, the front of the issue for um, Civil War, mm. you know, yeah. um, Iron Man and, and Captain America with that very visually striking scene, yeah, yeah. kind of putting that in there is a very cool homage and and, and callback well, to that. That's the thing. They know how to take the iconography from these comics that they're aware no one has actually read. Yeah. Like they know that Civil War is a thing you've heard about if you, you know, have a cursory idea about what's in the comics. You know, oh yeah, that was a big thing in the comics, the Civil War. Um, but you don't need to know anything about it. The movie was nothing like it, really. Mm, there yeah. were a couple of key points that were similar, but uh, I think that'll continue to be the same for all of these. Um, so this one is uh, currently filming, which must be a nightmare. It's the Russo brothers are back from Civil War and Winter Soldier directing this one again. Uh, perfect guys for the job, I think. Big ups to those guys. Can you imagine? Mm. I, and I was Thank God there's two earlier of them. That yeah, this seriously. just seems like such a monumental kind of task. Like the, what they're going to have to live up to is, is insane. 
And Joss Whedon, you know, he did the first two Avengers. They're taking over for this one. There's a lot on riding on these guys, but they clearly know how to juggle multiple storylines that we talked about um, uh, in Civil War. The shooting schedule must look like algebra. Yeah. Like, oh, it yeah. must be insanity. I'm, I'm concerned that this film is going to be like, 20 actors talking to each other who are never in the same room <laughs> for <Yeah>. a second. <laughs> you know? Just green screen them, man. Yeah, well, apparently, apparently I was reading just the other day that uh, Doctor Strange is, you know, being filmed in, in, I guess, ensemble parts and he's, like, Benedict Cumberbatch isn't there. Wow. Like, there's, there's a stand-in and Benedict Cumberbatch will be, it'll be shot for when they need, what? you know, his lines. Schedules, or, man. I mean, these guys, ha- I mean. It's how, the only way it can be done. They've got to, they've That's got to, so you know, shoot Maybe a bunch is, of movies. I've got a theory that they went for the Russo brothers because they, they knew at least one of them will crack at one point and yeah. have to be like institutionalized for a couple weeks. Yeah. And then the other one can keep on yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Well, they can just so keep just, tagging out. Yeah, they just keep <laughs> tapping in yeah, and out. And going back when one the, has a mental break. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, also, Alan Silvestri is coming back after composing the score for the first Avengers. So, that's pretty cool. He didn't do Age of Ultron, did he? Didn't do it, no. Who who was that? Let's have a look. I'm not it's sure. They, facts. Yeah, they didn't really touch on his theme too much in that one. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's, I mean, that's as you cool. said, it's never been the key point of any a Marvel film, is the music. That yeah, which it. is a shame. Yeah it, yeah, it would be nice to have a few more kind of themes you can you can hum as get, you're coming out of the Get Hans Zimmer in there. Oh boy. Oh, he's <laughs> with the DC EU, man. Yeah. <laughs> that Batman theme, dude. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Tense. <laughs> what has happened to this podcast? It's just a bunch of guys going into mics. <laughs> um, um, also, so Infinity War is the first film shot entirely in IMAX. Oh, oh the, really? The format. Yeah. yeah. So that's See, now I am concerned that we don't have an IMAX in Sydney. And <laughs> if you want to add like any prob- more issues to contend with with this it's kind insane. of film, because I- IMAX, um, they they touch p- uh, upon this in the Dark Knight, um, behind the scenes. It's so loud. The 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 motor to run this film through is so loud on set. You can't take anything from the set in terms of audio. Mm. And you know that's a big thing in Hollywood. A lot of stuff is overdubbed mm. in um, these movies. Definitely. I mean, every everything's basically done um, ADR. Mm. Um, so they redub the voices and then sync them up together with the on screen um, dialogue. But you know that just adds another whole issue that you have to contend with. They're big cameras. They're bulky cameras. Mm. Um, but for this kind of film, which is a spectacle film, God. to do it on that kind of um, celluloid uh, medium, I think is uh, a great, great um, testament to the whole project. Do you reckon that everyone at Marvel doesn't want to do this film, but they've they've just they've already Backed set a trajectory? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. like, so we got to do, gotta do it. They all just like yes. go to work this, crying. This, <laughs> this yeah, yeah. Is going Please, down. No. Kevin, Kevin Feige gets home after you know Avengers Two comes out. He's like, <laughs> oh <laughs> shit, we actually have to make this now. <laughs> what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> what have I done? I sacrificed Joss Whedon's life to make yeah. that last one. What are we gonna have to do <laughs> to this <laughs> next one? God, he ran for the hills. Didn't he? Yeah. yeah, man. I think I think he's corner. getting better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's it's uh, partially filming in Scotland, so it's good to know at least some of it will be not like a green screen CGI, sort yeah. of thing. Yes. And then you find out they're in just a giant warehouse in Scotland. <laughs> in Scotland. <laughs> yeah. Thought we could use a change of scenery. Okay, cool. So what do we got up next, Benny? Yeah, that will be very interesting to see. That I hope it is amazing. Yeah. Um. So after this, we have one that I'm super stoked for. July 6, 2018, Ant-Man and the Wasp. I love how every time you say, this one, I am stoked this for. This one, <laughs> this is my most anticipated. <laughs> no, 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 but, but Ant-Man in particular, um, I love that film. Uh, we've mentioned this before, but the first time I saw it, I liked it a lot. Second time I saw it at the cinema, liked it a lot. Um, I watched it again more recently on, uh, on the old Netflix, and I just fell in love. It's, it is so fun. It's something about that heist plot with uh the marvel aesthetic and the, and the comedy. Judd Apatow yeah, kind of yeah. improv yeah with uh, Michael Peña and Michael Peña. um his his ongoing gag oh, is fantastic so every good. time oh yeah i think my my favorite it's comedy line of the past like five years is that bit where someone says he's in the system he's like i'm in the system <laughs> <laughs> the system yeah the system <laughs> 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 that's amazing he's so yes on that note Michael Peña is returning 
uh, for this yes. one that has been announced. I think the f- as soon as I announced this film, people Good. were like, is Michael Pena coming back? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, yes. Um, Peyton Reed is returning to direct this one again after um, coming in when Edgar Wright left the first film, And man, how much pressure would you have had? Yeah, like, taking you- over for Edgar oh, Wright. And Edgar Jesus. Wright, he's just a force in Hollywood. Everyone loves him. Everyone respects him so it, much. It is, it is such a testament to how well that film turned out that, that people are like, yes, it was good. Like people, people are on different kind of levels yeah. with it, but no one was like, that movie sucked. Yeah. Like he came in, took over an Edgar Wright film. And people were like, yeah, okay, it was fine. <laughs> the main criticism I remember from that film is people said it was basically Iron Man. Um, it, it, it was yeah. te- that sort of tech based, smaller mm. comic book yeah. movie. Yeah, which is not wrong. It was a very similar plot, but, but it was I, a I lot of fun. I that. I didn't, yeah. it didn't bother me Iron at all. It good. differentiated <laughs> itself enough on other levels mm. that I thought it was its own thing. I thought, um, uh, Yellow Jacket, the villain uh, Corey Stoll was he was awesome. he was so good. I thought he was he was better than playing um, a deranged Iron man. Monger in Iron Man. Yeah. He's got it. Yeah, yeah. That 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 shot of him going into the bug zapper yeah, when he wakes yeah, back yeah. up and just screams. That's <laughs> yeah. like out of a horror movie. That is so cool. Um, but interesting that Ant Man Ant Man One came out just before Age of Ultron, right? Uh, Ant Man maybe I don't came know. out. Um, Ant Man T Civil War. It came out after. It was the last film in Phase Two. Okay, okay. So, because Ant-Man's always done at the end, it seems to be it's always the release at the end of phases and it's sort of around these much bigger scaled films. Mm. So, they're kind of doing a bit of counter programming there with, you know, making a little bit of a smaller intimate story, um, which was the success of the first one. Mm. But the Wasp in this is is Evangeline Lilly's character, yeah. which mm. is really exciting because I really cool liked her in the first one. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting note. This is actually the first um, female character in the MCU with a title role. Right. In one of the films. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm not counting for yeah. Jessica Jones and Agent Carter, the TV yep. series. Yeah. Yep. But uh, yeah, so that's kind of, I like how that kind of snuck in there. It's very yeah. appropriate for Ant Man that he's kind of keeps sneaking these things in there. Yeah. Um, I, I do remember reading about uh, Peyton Reed saying when he saw Civil War and the, um, the, the air, airport scene where Giant Man comes yeah, into yeah, it. Yeah. And he was like, shit, I wanted to use that. <laughs> like, where, where, do I, where do I go for the sequel now? <laughs> well, that was meant to be. So that's kind of an interesting area where this synergy can maybe. Not Steal heard, someone not heard a film, but yeah, like yeah. the sequel is meant to be you know bigger and better, and it's like, well, <laughs> it's interesting that you mentioned taken. that they're kind of downgrading it into a perhaps a more contained story. Um, considering kind of what I said before, which is I don't think they have the luxury of that. It's it'll be very interesting to see if that is in fact how they do it. Well, this movie is nestled in between like Avengers films, yeah, snugly, and and also it's picking up. Um, like the character from Civil War, where yeah. he's, he's now a global fugitive. Ironically, that might be the best place to put a contained story mm. because he's you meant can't, to be hiding. <laughs> he's meant to be hiding, and you can't touch too much from the yeah. Avengers because yeah. that has to pretty much directly follow on from yeah from the first one. Mm. But, so that might be where you do it. Yeah, I loved um I love the macro micro scale that um. Ant Man one worked on like mm. the bathtub scene mm. and and him interacting with the the insects mm. and the ants. Uh, that was that was about they the, really nailed that. And it was about the smallest stakes film we've seen in the MCU since the original, which was nice. Iron Man, yeah. I hope, so I hope they nice. stick to that because it is just on a meta level, it's so appropriate. And that's um, another thing I character. liked about Guardians of the Galaxy too. It was just kind of like it was another adventure. Yeah, it was with, like, with the entire universe at stake. I know, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> and it giant that. giant CGI blobs. <laughs> What point are you trying to make yeah. here? No, no, I, I, mean? I absolutely agree. It was it was an emotional character story, um, but it just seemed like another adventure happen, rather right? than another episode of the Guardians of the Galaxy. There we go. Yeah, cool. I feel you. Alrighty, so after that, we jump all the way ahead to March 8, twenty nineteen. Um, twenty nineteen, Captain Marvel. We finally get uh, the the first female led film from the MCU. Yeah, so that one uh, ended up getting pushed back when Spider-Man kind of got announced, uh, much to the annoyance of a lot of people. But uh, obviously, very early days. It. Sorry? At least we're getting it. <laughs> and you know when MCU says that you're going to get a film, you're actually going to get the film. Like yeah. the Inhumans. Yeah. Um, like 99% We're still going to get time. the property. Yeah. <laughs> if not um, the film. So we obviously don't know too much about this. Uh, Brie Larson was cast a while ago as Captain Marvel after a lot of speculation. Um, fantastic Great casting. Yes. Yeah, she's, she's awesome. Um, really good for the role, I think. And just recently we had news that um, Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck were picked for the directing duties, uh, who recently did Mississippi Grind with Ben Mendelsohn and uh, Ryan Reynolds, yeah. which I was a terrific film. film but really, from really all good. Accounts, it ben Mendelsohn, man, he is so good. I hope they get him into the MCU, actually. That'd be cool. Uh, that would be sick. Mm. 
Um, well, we've gotten every other actor in there, so <laughs> yeah. every, every, every everyone will be there. I was going to say, is there anyone that hasn't at least touched into the uh, MCU? He's like? in Star Wars, so he's in the Disney family. Get yeah, uh, get Krennic. Krennic. <laughs> get Krennic in all. Oh my goodness! Don't mention that. <laughs> I had a good vision of Ben Mendelsohn in my head for a second uh, there. <laughs> Uh, I still so remember seeing him first in the, in that um, Animal, Animal Kingdom, Animal Kingdom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, terrific, and has just skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Dark Knight Rises, he was oh, in, that's and right. uh, yeah, he's been that's in right. Star Wars film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, he's doing well for himself, yeah. man. If only he Carl really Rossi. had to clean himself up because he was basically their character in Animal Kingdom. I don't know if I'm speaking to out of turn here, but he he had to rope it in. He, he, well, I he was years ago at the cinema, not recently, in the last you know five five or six years. Um, and uh, he sounds rough. Like he yeah. sounds like he's that character. He, yeah. I can't speak too much to, to he's, what he's actually. Yeah, like, he's. But. I mean, you can see that he's had drug and alcohol yeah. problems. The guy can't sit still. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's it's amazing. It's, it's a amazing how good of an actor he is. He but. is so talented, and I'm really glad he's getting that worldwide um, acknowledgement now. Because it's the worldwide, <laughs> yeah. Prestige worldwide, worldwide. And he's actually Australian, so we can legitimately claim. Fuck him. yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Captain Marvel, interestingly enough, was originally meant to be in Jessica Jones um, as the Trish Walker role. Okay. okay. Um, yep. Another Australian actress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and I guess that was when they had a little less clear idea of what they were doing. Um, then she was meant to debut in, I think, uh, Age of Ultron. There are a lot of rumors that she was going to show up in. Um, I don't know how substantiated that ever was, but... Uh, it sounded pretty legit, but yeah, it just didn't end up happening in the end. Civil War as well, wasn't it? That she was meant to be in there? Um, no. I don't know where you're getting that from. That's what you've written. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you've written that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I realized because my brain's very smart that it was actually Age of Ultron. Oh, okay, cool. Last <laughs> second. But, yeah. <laughs> Um, you're like the you're like Ron Burgundy with the, the role, whatever it says on the notes. It's like well, you're the one that wrote it, so I trusted it. I'm just saying, just trust the man. Trust yeah. the man. He knows what he's doing. But he's that. the one that wrote it. I know. <laughs> Which version of him like, am I meant to trust? Uh, uh, should, was should... it in uh, Civil War? Well, I just, I think. Fuck, it's right there. It's written there. I was like, oh well, if we're not going to mention getting it, an I'll insight him. into the making of yeah. a podcast. Why haven't I thought of that in the show notes every week? Just yeah. like just live, like while you sabotage. <laughs> and apparently, I'm a, a stupid head. <laughs> um, <laughs> so eloquently put. Oh, man. Oh, all so right. um, we don't really know anything about this movie. We're excited for it, I guess. I hope they give yeah. her a good uh, suit. Because yeah. Because I think uh, Captain Marvel... Cool look in the comics. On initial, just kind of going off the the whatever. Yeah. Whatever I'm trying to say here. <laughs> yeah. um, it's... Uh, it's a tough one to get right. Yeah, it's just another. It's you know one of those kind of skin tight spandex things, and but just the character in general. You know what is Ca- Captain Marvel? I don't really know much about her. She's just superhuman, super strength, it, flies, it alien stuff involved. Okay. Um, kind of cos- weird. kind of cosmic stuff. Yet, yeah. So she's like Superman. Uh, n- she's a human, but there's. I would say Greenland's probably closer comparison. Okay. But um, oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's not a, a character association you want. <laughs> well. Yeah. It's on um, the big screen, definitely yeah, not. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big black X. <laughs> yeah, so fingers crossed that one will be good. And then we get to the final film of Phase 3, uh, Avengers 4, Untitled. <laughs> Doesn't have an <laughs> Which a, is no official name Infinity yet. Wars, yeah, it was meant yeah. to be Infinity War Part 2. Uh, now it's just uh, Avengers 4 at this point. That's uh, May 3rd, 2019. Which they started shooting because they uh, sh- so were shooting them. So it officially together. starts in August, um, shooting for that. Them. They've probably gotten bits and pieces, but um, yeah, I guess at this point we don't know anything about this movie now because it's yeah. not Infinity War Part Two. Yep. So what is it? It'll be interesting to see how different they are. I know they're changing the the title, but um, it'll really be like how they end Infinity War. Um, with is it going to be like this massive cliffhanger? Mm. Is it going to be just kind of to be? How can type? it be in a way? I mean, yeah. it can be. They've got but two movies in between. There's, yeah, there's yeah. two more movies in there, but I don't know how interrelated they'll be to to what's happening there. But uh, yeah, this is really just a, a wild card at this point. It's it's uh, the the 22nd film in the MCU. Wow. wow. Film, film alone, not, that, wow. not including Netflix and ABC yeah, and, yeah. and now so Freeform. They'll be averaging two a year, pretty much. 
from 2008 to 2019, 11 years, 22 films, mm. divided by two, two. <laughs> <laughs> two. I'm questioning <laughs> that. Wait, 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 let me check you back. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, so, just so we're all on the same page. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm with you, man. The, the, this, I, I don't know. I get the feeling that this one could be something totally different. Mm. Like I almost get, I don't know if you guys ever watched Neon Genesis Evangelion, the anime series, but basically it was 26 episodes and- um, you know, business as usual kind of mecha show with some some darker tones, but episode twenty five and twenty six is just like the psychedelic. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't answer anything. You know, I, I don't. I, think- I really hope Avengers four isn't Ant Man turning too giant and just eating <laughs> everyone I mean? in the world. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like this could really be random. this could be something completely different. Yeah, no, I, I completely be. agree. Because, but like, how how do you? Um, step up from Infinity War. I feel like they're going to rein it back in. They have to, surely. Yeah. Unless they're just continuing that story. I on. just want them to just kill off all the characters. I've, I've expressed this desire before. Well, I, I, I reckon Infinity War will be the big the big massacre Cold. one. That'll Cold. be the one where people okay. die. Captain America, for certain, he'll die, and he'll probably come back in, in Avengers 4. Okay. And yeah. That'll, that'll be I can see that moment. as being a viable way, like just have some proper massacre at the end of um, Infinity War and then bring the last one really down in scale and then have it kind of play out much as Adventures 1 did. I'm calling this now 100% and I actually will put money down on this. Um, Infinity War. Um, I'm going to say Infinity War. It could be another film, but Infinity War is going to have Captain America wielding Thor's hammer and dying. Oofed. And it's going to be fucking epic. Are you wielding saying that hammer? because of something that's happened in the comics um, or just because you have a feeling? Not, not because of the comics, because, because they've been setting it up. Age of Ultron, man, he moved that hammer yeah. and it is going to happen because it is, right. it is going to be wicked. It'll be yeah, so cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even mentioning that has yeah. got me excited. Man, I was just the visualizing shield, that The shield, scene. the hammer, oh, fuck. it's going to be sick. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting excited for a scene that I don't, I don't know. no evidence is actually going to happen. <laughs> it's but I'm gonna right happen. there with you. I'm it's so happen. pumped for it's that. It's in the system. <laughs> but I guess uh, as a final wrap up, you know, what are you guys most excited for out of all of these and... Combined with that, where do you think the MCU is going to go after Avengers 4? Yeah. Okay, so I'll just jump in quickly. They have announced two films after this already. Yep. Guardians 3. Yes. Uh, with yeah. James Gunn James returning. Gunn. That's 2020? Uh, I don't know exactly when it's going to be, but probably. It's presumably. after um, uh, Infinity War 2 or the fourth. In- yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah, that's the end of Phase 3. So yeah. these, this is technically Phase 4 for whatever that's worth. Um, and Spider-Man uh, Homecoming, I guess, 2. two. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, also... They're confident about that one, I guess. Um, for most excited, I think it's it might be a tie between Thor and Black Panther. Um, I really like the potential of Black Panther, um, but the immediacy of Thor and just how cool that looks, and you know, uh, just everything about that film screams like it's going to be a really good Thor film for me. Um, uh, in terms of where I think that the it can go, kind of post Phase Three, I've I've expressed this before. I think that they'll do a massive call, or I hope that they do a massive call, and then just have that f- fourth Some phase generation really just take on a different feeling in a different direction. Um, I mean, even if that's just new characters or um, you know, just uh, something something really different. Like I know the difference between phase one and two and two and three have been relatively unnoticeable. It's just about the scale and the size of it. I, I really do hope that phase four is a completely different direction as opposed to just the size. Over the past 10 years, Marvel has like completely reshaped the cinema landscape. Oh, um, yeah. I, I, don't, I can't even speculate as to what phase four would be. I have no idea what they're going to do. They have to scale back in some way, I guess, because this is getting unwieldy. Yeah. <laughs> even Aven- um, Avengers is a, unwieldy. A already, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms of what I'm most excited for coming up, I I couldn't say. I think I would honestly. I think I could only say I'm least excited maybe for um, Spider Man and Captain Marvel. Literally everything else is just like through the roof. Um, and I I don't want to denigrate them at all. I, they're still very up there, but um, just I don't know anything about Captain Marvel at this point. And Spider Man is another Spider Man film. It's probably going to be the best one we've seen in a while. But oh, fucking better be. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm with you guys. I think. Top billing for me, most anticipated is Thor, Ragnarok, and Black Panther. Yeah. I'm actually really excited for Cloak and Dagger. I was, about about to say that. That. I was about to say something that. Something about that has <laughs> really piqued my interest. I think it's a sick trailer. I think you guys are not going to like the show. We'll see. I just have a funny feeling, yeah. Hmm. Um, but in terms of where it's going, um, I, you know, speculating, I think they're going to have to um, 
do a cull. I think maybe say goodbye to Danny Jr., say goodbye to Chris Evans, yep. say goodbye to Chris Hemsworth. And then, you know, we've heard I've heard rumblings of maybe Iron Heart, so Iron Man, the female Iron Man. You know, so maybe we, we get a new generation of, of these characters and we, we kind of start from scratch. The once heroes again. will live on. The the human component, the human character will not. Yeah. Like there will still be Iron Man, there'll still be Spider Man. The brands stay, the portrayals yeah. Yeah. change. Yeah. I'm going to make a call. Thor and Hulk survive as the characters that they are. Um, but they just piss off. It's yeah, I think Thor will become this kind of mystic kind of background yeah. character. Um, and I think that our, our, like Robbie Downey Jr. as Iron Man or Tony Stark will die. Um, Captain America will die. <laughs> Jesus. Because um, that scene in Age of Ultron where he sees the, the, them all fucked up. Them all, mm. That's going to definitely Something play into come it. Something's going to come of that, yeah. Yeah, I don't, um, I, I don't think any of them are going to die. I, I think a couple, like uh, there'll be like a big death I don't think they're going to kill all of these well, beloved childhood that characters. Will die. Yeah, so that's why I say I think there'll be a big death, yeah. a big dramatic one, and I think he'll be back um, yeah. in the the, the the later film. But um, I don't think they're going to kill off all of because these. They'll, they'll want these guys to rock up in ten years. You know, yeah. Downey Jr. is back, two thousand twenty nine. You know, <laughs> he's back. Here <laughs> we go. Yeah, you know man. It makes Logan. me sad, but you're probably right. It makes you sad that they're not going to die. You just I, am. See I, just, I just want to see that. Like, I just want to see blood and guts. Just every scene. single fucking Avenger wiped off the fucking planet. I would just love to see that. Yeah. Marvel are notorious for not putting themselves, themselves into a corner. So. Yeah. And I mean, they've, they've don't had die. to so far. Yeah. But, um, Other but than the, that's because they're building up to something. I feel like, I mean, Good. if they get there, this is kind of the, the, the final final moment for this kind of what they've been working up to I can kill all of them just do it <laughs> anyway we've got plenty to look forward to man future's looking bright can you mention like kind of coming into the universe now like you know let's say that you're just old enough to be oh, getting into imagine cool. growing up with it Fuck, yeah. imagine that Listen, we had nothing like that yeah I feel like I've kind of grown up with it though like I know I'm not eight years old yeah, no, but, but imagine, I in my like, heart I'm eight years old as an old, actual but... kid growing yeah, up with yeah, it like, can, imagine, can you imagine how much this means to yeah. them yeah it's far insane. out man crazy yeah Crazy, yeah. but anyway, man, that was fun. I, I'm, I'm, I feel well prepared for what <laughs> is to come for the next yeah. three years. And um, get everything in our calendars. Yeah, so maybe we can do another one of these for DC, Star Wars, and that's yep. it. That's DC and Star ones. Wars take about half an hour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pause it out. But like no, no other property has no. even close to this kind no. of. Like, oh, actually, let's do an episode catalog. for the Universal Monster Movie Universe. Oh God, <laughs> I, I'm yeah, not I mean, going to be here for that. Not only are they for scale, but just interest wise, yeah. fuck no. But yeah, DC, like if you know, you, you know, Cyborg's coming supposedly in 2019 or whatever. But the if is that actually going to materialize? It, we have no Who idea. Knows? That's Man, he knows? looks so bad. <laughs> Anyway, guys, this has been fun. Uh, let's do it again sometime soon. Maybe next weekend. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, it's been a pleasure. Connor. See ya. And Benny. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.